All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome in. So the Jets are playing in a game this Sunday night, and uh, to be honest with you, you know, at least for me, it feels as though this is like a playoff game in October. There's a ton that rides on this game. The Jets just cannot afford to be two and five on the season, right? Two and five through seven weeks. So with that, we look at who we're playing, right? The Pittsburgh Steelers in their house, Sunday night football, prime time. The Steelers, they have been in my opinion, one of the most impressive teams on the defensive side of the football this season. They're actually a top five unit. They, I mean, they just excel in so many different areas. They're number two in points allowed, number eight in yards allowed. They're the third best team in the red zone, again, on the defensive side of the football. And they're top five in both turnovers and time of possession in both sides of the football, right? Offensively and defensively and total, they're four and two on the season. Now, one thing that's pretty interesting with the Steelers is the quarterback situation. Obviously, we saw the team make a move for both Justin Fields and Russell Wilson the offseason. Russell has been dealing with a calf injury, so we've seen, uh, well, initially, Russ was named the starter. Then the team transitioned to Justin Fields for the first six games of the season. And, you know, the offense... Definitely hasn't been, you know, high flying, super, super productive or anything like that, but it is efficient, right? They just don't really turn the ball over all that much. Uh, they control the clock. And, you know, I understand that Justin Fields is not a top five, top 10 quarterback in football, but he has five passing touchdowns to only one interception through these six weeks. And granted, it's not like they're asking him to throw 40 plus times a game weekly. And, you know, they're putting the game on Justin Fields. A plate and saying, hey, go win us the game. It's more so, can you manage it? Can you make smart decisions? Uh, and again, right, five to one TD to INT ratio. And then you factor in the rushing touchdowns, five more. So 10 total touchdowns because of Justin Fields to one interception. Here's the deal though, right? Despite those effective and efficient numbers, it's looking like he could be the starting quarterback for the Steelers this Sunday. But personally, I, I honestly would not be surprised if we see a little bit of both. Uh, could this be, you know, maybe some uh, some coaching uh, kind of theatrics within the media to where it's like, oh, you know, uh, interim head coach Jeff Ulbrich, you know, a team that's coming off of the three straight losses. We're, you know what? We're not going to just give you the answers to the test here. We're going to just keep it up in the air, right? It could be Russ. It could be Fields. It's le we're leaning towards Russ, but we're not going to actually officially name him as the starter. At least that's the case, uh, you know, at the timing of this video here. Now, whoever we see a quarterback, right, Fields or Russ, it's going to be a difficult game. Why? Because the Pittsburgh Steelers simply do not beat themselves. They come prepared week in, week out with a solid game plan. And in the event that they do start off a little rocky on the defensive side of the football, they've shown an ability to adjust midway, right? Like adjust on the fly to uh, clamp opposing offenses. So many talented players on that uh, Pittsburgh Steelers defense. Mika Fitzpatrick's one of my favorite players in the game, of course, right? TJ Watt's kind of the headliner uh, at the edge position, but um, man, oh man, you know, it's a veteran defense. They're well coached and we're playing in Pittsburgh on prime time. Like this is like put up or shut up uh, for the New York Jets. Like this is, this is about as difficult as it can get in a mid season game with a lot on the line. So luckily for the Jets, we're going to be rolling into Pittsburgh with Devontae Adams. Now, it's hard to say how the offense is exactly going to look like with Devontae Adams now added to the mix, but I'll say this, I like our chances to move the ball based off of what we saw last week with Todd Downing running the show, calling plays, moving Garrett Wilson into the slot, so you're getting a humongous upgrade there, you're going from Xavier Gibson to Garrett Wilson, that's massive, and then again, of course, Devontae is one of the best receivers in the game, and he already, according to Aaron Rodgers, is 95% of the way uh, there as far as just being where he needs to be and that was I believe uh, actually yesterday so um, I'm expecting points and I know it again we're in Pittsburgh playing a good defense I'm expecting points no more excuses for the Jets team no more excuses for the Jets offense it is time to roll I agree with Garrett Wilson's tweet where he said hey you know what we gotta go and we gotta go now I agree it's time to start getting in the end zone and I think things are trending upwards Again, we lost, we beat ourselves against the Buffalo Bills, give them credit, but I mean, just squandered offer, uh, opportunities after squandered opportunities, right? I, I want to say in all four quarters, we shot ourselves in the foot, whether it's a missed kick, whether it's a bad throw, whether it's uh, a turnover to you know lose the game in the end from Rodgers, was that Mike Williams running the wrong route? According to Rodgers, it was um, penalties. 
you name it, drop passes, like it, it was probably there. Uh, I, I think maybe my biggest concern for the game is offensive line protection, right? Like how are these guys going to hold up against a talented Steelers defensive line with, of course, again, one of the marquee names in the entire National Football League and TJ Watt coming off the edge. It is going to be a battle. I'm expecting it to be a close, close game. One thing that I did find pretty interesting, the Steelers were the Vegas favorite earlier on in the week. The The night that Adams got traded to the Jets, we actually saw a point swing to now the Jets are actually uh, one and a half point favorites and typically we don't actually see uh, like major point swings like that because of a wide receiver trade so I personally thought that that was interesting but you know this this is one of those games where you know you're just putting yourself in the hypothetical right as a Jet fan we go into Pittsburgh whole world's watching primetime football we've been embarrassed two times on primetime football this season right Obviously, last week against Buffalo, just just a, a disgraceful performance. And then getting blown out in week one against the 49ers. If the Jets can manage to win this game, it, it kind of feels as though, you know what, this is like a soft reset. Now the season is really going to, you know, kick into high gear and, and start moving. We've seen Aaron Rodgers go on runs mid to late, uh, you know, in the mid to late portions of NFL seasons before. Granted, that was in the, you know, Packers days of Aaron Rodgers. And we are years removed from that. Um, but I, I, you know, you're watching Rogers. There's still, there's still ga- gas left in the tank. And, um, look, th- it starts this Sunday, right? Whatever has happened has happened. Hackett issues, solid issues, solid firing, whatever it is. Now it's time to go. Now is time to walk the walk. So we need a result. We need a W desperately. We cannot go on a four game losing streak, um, moving forward throughout the season as a two and five football team. It's just simply unacceptable. I'm viewing this game as a must win. I know not a lot of people are, and that's totally fine, but I really feel like the Jets need this one. We need it bad. So anyway, let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, the sponsor is from SeatGeek, the number one rated ticketing app with over 28 million downloads. Uh, They currently have over 70,000 events right now, ranging from sports, concerts, you name it, it's probably on SeatGeek, right? And my favorite thing about SeatGeek is that they rate each ticket, right? Based off of price, based off of uh, seating position within the stadium. So, for example, if you search up a you know a, a local game or you know, th- there's something that you want to go to, and there's an eight or a nine or a ten, which is highlighted in green. That's a really good deal compared to the tickets on the site where they're rated a two or a one or something like that, highlighted in red. Obviously, you'd want to go for the better deals. So I like how there's that clarification in there. It kind of takes the thinking out of it for me, at least. You could use my coupon code JETCENTRAL for $20 off your first purchase with SeatGeek. But yeah, it's always such a huge help. And shout out to SeatGeek for sponsoring the video. 